Yo, what is good, people? We are back at it. It's Keith versus the Stars. And as I said before, we are going to be doing this Evander Holyfield documentary. I still don't know if we're going to be doing a part one and part two. So we just record it all the way through. But this was another request for another boxing reaction video. And I like doing these videos. We just did Sugar Ray Robinson. His career was immaculate, crazy. He did a lot of great stuff. So let's see what a Vander Holyfield career is going to shake out. I know the air is coming. I know the air is coming. But let's get right to it, man. story of determination, heart, spirit, and the relentless pursuit of his dreams. Okay. Oof. That's a grainy ass video right there. The boxing icon. His he had a video, video game? One of the greatest mm. fighters from the last Knockout. 50 years. A fleet of sports cars. Most oh, of he had that bread bread. $30 million career earnings are gone. Mm. Oof. And a tragic tale mm. of losing it all. Really? Damn, Evander? The fight has been stopped. That is it for Ricky Myers, who has sustained two cuts around the right eye. Evander, real deal. Holy mm. field. TKO, Evander, real deal. Holy field. Raised by a single mother, his family moved to the crime-ridden Bowen Housing Projects Hold in Atlanta on, for work. When did you start boxing? Started at eight years old. A chance encounter with a youth coach pushed young Evander to boxing. Miss Morgan, he's like 70 years old. He said, do you know you can be like Muhammad Ali? <laughs> I said, I'm only eight years old. He said, you won't always be eight. Oof. He stormed through the amateur ranks okay. and joined the 1984 American Olympic boxing team, arguably the greatest squad in American really? history. I knocked Oof. everybody out. Oof. He won every match by knockout. And the last person I knocked out, they say I hit him on a break. This is Holyfield in the semifinals at the Olympic Games in Los Angeles versus Kevin Barry of New Zealand. Oh, there it goes. You saw that. It was inevitable. Now, wait a minute. It was on the break. On the break? will deduct the point, but I don't know that the fighter can go on. He was DQ'd after knocking out his opponent. What? Anton Yusupovic of Yugoslavia going on to win the goal. But the International Olympic Committee virtually admitted the unfairness of the disqualification and they awarded Holyfield the bronze medal. Man, get medal. the fuck out of here. No, 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 no. Don't give me your bronze medal, my nigga. I don't want that. You just ruined my, my chance at being a fucking gold medalist. You gonna give me a bronze? I don't want that. You keep that shit, bro. Man, get the... Man, stop it. Stop it, bro. It ranks among the greatest Olympic robberies Facts. To ever take place. Yeah, things happen. Yep. And my mom always told me things happen, good and bad to good people and bad people. Evander settled for bronze and set aim on a professional career. Another fact, the man we're going to show in the first bout is the best prospect in my opinion. Three knockouts, four, but didn't win the gold. Evander Holyfield. His highly anticipated debut went off without a hit. Here we go in the first round. Watch Holyfield in the red trunks, red, white, and blue from Atlanta, Georgia. He uh, punches extremely Oof. hard with, to the Oof. body. Back to okay. The with the left hook, doubling up on okay. He's trying to cover up, though. He's doing a good job. He's eating some, too, though. Oof. Yeah, one, two, it's crazy. Ugh. The winner of the unanimous decision in his professional boxing debut, Evander Rio Dino Holyfield. 
Holyfield was the hottest commodity Facts, in boxing, okay. not named Mike Tyson. After his popularity soared following that provocative disqualification at the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. My son is a great businessman, and, and most of all, he had my, my best interest in his heart. His Olympic robbery had elevated mm -hmm. him to mainstream consciousness and drew the attention of crooked managers and promoters. When you don't have other bodies looking out for you. Everybody taking something for themselves. Man, everybody was just stealing, man. They just stealing. Really? It seems that you trusted the wrong people. Well, yeah. With a chance to make a name for himself against Devander Holyfield, who many feel in a couple of years will be primed for a shot at the light heavyweight mm. title. With each fight, Holyfield mm. improved. That stuns Rivera. Mm. And Holyfield works on the body, comes back to the head, comes back to the head again with a left. Okay. Okay. Ah, right, goddamn boy. Oof. Ew. Boy, stop eating those. Gentle human being outside of the ring, he's soft spoken, but in that ring, he's like a Ray Leonard. He's the, all the great ones have that that, uh, that quality. He's just he's a kind of guy who would back in Greece, he'd have a sword in his hand and be out in the sawdust coming at you, you know, and you wouldn't want to see that. He's a bayonet fighter. He wants to get in there with you, but uh, get close. He doesn't want any fooling around. He's in a fist fight. And he's in against Evander Holyfield, who uh, became such a national figure as a result of a disqualification in the Olympic Games. Okay. The winner of this fight figures to be in line for a title opportunity with Donald Quarry mm. and uh, Leon Spinks. Not relying mm. on brute power, but true boxing skill to put his Oof. opponents away. He is going to clap that nigga again. I look forward to him. I look basically rely on my boxing ability. If I can't knock a guy out, I can sit there and use my jab and beat him, beat him all eight rounds or how many rounds that I have to go. So it's, it's not like I'm short fuel, short patient or anything. Okay. Here, Moody gets caught in the ropes, which opens the door for Holyfield to unleash hell. You see what you finna do, Holyfield? Not the kind of fighter traditionally who has been able to be knocked out with one punch. You have to put punches together. Oof. Like Holyfield, God. The way he hitting is don't don't hit him again. Oh. <coughs> oh shit. Why he still hitting him? Are they going to show every single fight he had? Because I don't think that's necessary, to be real with you. At home in an Atlanta suburb, our living proof that his life is more than boxing. There's wife Paulette, two-year-old son of Andrew Jr., and daughter Ashley. At home, and he was popping him out, wasn't he? a man of family and faith. Though over the years, he'd struggle with fidelity. Mm. Another major reason for his financial downfall. Having 11 kids with... 11, my nigga? This was the 80s, man. Condoms was a thing. You don't have to do this. Why this nigga got so many kids? That's, come on. Wrap it up, bro. Just wrap it up. It ain't that hard. Man. Sidebar. Wrap it up, Joey. <laughs> he said it, too. fun can cost you a whole lot of your future. Oof. In the ring. Oof. He was a warrior Oof. of the scariest Oof. regard. Uppercut got in. Ugh. A perpetual motion machine who throws punches and bunches and seems to never tire.
he'd now contend for his first world title. Okay. He now has a chance to become the first of the Olympians to fight for a world title. Is he ready this fast? He has been very impressive in his eight fights to date. He has shown that he has retained uh, his power. He puts punches together very, very yeah. well. And he has the competitive fire to take on an opponent in, when he's in trouble. 30 years ago this year, you won your first title against Dwight Muhammad Quarry. You ended up in hospital that night. Mm. Uh, you know, it was a very tough fight. And my 12th rotation of fight. Didn't nobody think I would win. They thought I was going to get knocked out. Slapping hands, he goes up into the ring. I didn't come in and get knocked out. I came to win. Do your thing, Evander. Evander Holyfield hearing the cheer. The bell rings, and this is round one. Just two years after his Olympic disappointment, he was fighting for the junior heavyweight title. Dwight Muhammad Kawi was an absolute beast. Mm. Known for his ferocious punching power, he was no cupcake title holder for the young Holyfield. Beating the champion and doing everything he has to do. Many young fighters target a belt held by someone who they Oof. view as beatable. Oof. Couple of big punches from the left and another one from the right. Evander mm. in his first title fight Damn. An even bet. A coin flip. What ensued was a war. Oof. Who is dude? Dude. Oof. He throwing him, bitch. Okay. Okay. A real back and forth brawl that mm. ended the resolve of the young Holyfield. But I, I must admit, I read a few times that you consider that to be Ooh. one of your hardest fights, if not your hardest fight. That was the toughest fight. Mm. Dude ain't going. One reason, because I didn't have that much experience, and another reason, I went 15 rounds. Mm. The real deal threw over 1,200 punches in 15 Damn. rounds. 1,200. Who does that? Wait. Yo, that's some video game type shit. 1,200 punches? Maybe that's... Am I tripping? Let me know. Am I tripping? But that seemed like a shitload of punches, man. Let me know, man. I think I'm tripping, but I don't know. He'd secure his first professional title. Thank you very much, Alan. Evander Holyfield seemingly more impressive with each outing. And several times during the course of the fight, we heard Al and Alex Waller refer to the fight in which he won the title. And that was back in July, last July 12th to be exact. It was at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. And he took the title from Dwight Muhammad Cowie. Evander had been baptized by mm -hmm. fire and would be the better for it. Turned pro in November of 84, the night of gold in New York, took less than two years to win a title. And as I turn now to Alex Wallow, the irony here is that there were nine gold medalists, one silver medalist, and one bronze medalist for the U.S. at Los Angeles. And the man who won the bronze wound up winning <laughs> the first title. But even though he is champion, I think he has not yet reached his full potential. This is only his 14th professional fight. That's and crazy. With more experience, he will get better, especially if he gets that surge of confidence that comes to so many fighters when they win a title. He take on former Olympic teammate. Henry Tillman. Oof. Henry. Watch that shit, boy. Did that nigga ball up? He battered Tillman, dropping him four times. <laughs> Henry, man, don't don't do it to yourself, bro. Just stay down. Oh shit. Henry. That's a Mortal Kombat song, again. Mortal Kombat! He remains undefeated with 14 straight. He won by a technical knockout at 143 of the seventh round. Immediately, there was speculation about Holyfield jumping up to okay. heavyweight. 
but Evander had goals of conquering the cruiserweight division first. He was one of the first guys that figured out how to correctly implement uh, weightlifting training because of Mackie Shilston. We profile Holyfield and the training that he underwent. It's 21st century kind of techniques. They're very involved with Team Holyfield, the kinds of people they have working with. Using free weights and specially designed weight machines, Hallmark has bulked Holyfield up from 190 to 202 without sacrificing any of his hand speed or endurance. Hmm. Holyfield pushed training to new heights. That's why that nigga look like a superhero. Implementing training in ways boxers hadn't before. The next goal was to keep looking for better and better ways to keep him motivated, to keep him uh, sharp. Conditioning coach Tim Hallmark hmm. have taken a unique preparation approach with a futuristic training program that is transforming Evander into boxing first high-tech heavyweight. Better way to train, better equipment to train on. Once one goal's met, there's another goal right behind it. Evander Holyfield is the WBA junior heavyweight uh, champion. Ricky Parkey is the IBF uh, cruiserweight uh, champ. Holyfield scoring with Oof. left and right. Boy? And it hurt. Boy? Keep your hands up. Ah! He stepped over Against Ricky Parkey, Holyfield had a shot to capture his uh -huh. second title. Oof. Boy. That'd be it right there. That's that that that's an anime fail. Uh, he, fa that's an anime fall where you hit you, when they hit the nigga and then the nigga just fall to the side of him like he just watched them fall. Man, that's some gangster shit, man. Thunderous mm -hmm. knockout had secured Holyfield the IBF Cruiserweight okay. title. I do want to just take Ozzy Ocasio and take him very seriously. Then, then afterwards, then you know, looking for is that. Oh, uh, look at that gross bitch behind him. Whoever might be there at that time. Holyfield and Mike Tyson were on a collision course that seemed inevitable. Holyfield kept doing his part. Hmm. Mm. You get the feeling Ocasio certainly doesn't want it. Mm. Holyfield zeroing in, knowing this could end right now. Ooh. Boy fall. Then loose. Evander Holyfield retains his WBA junior heavyweight IBF cruiserweight crowns and sets up a second match with Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Okay. Let's see if Kyle we do his thing this time. Evander look old enough. This is for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship. Rated number one by the WBA, number three according to the IBF. Oof. Time former world champion says he has only one goal to regain the title from Evander Holyfield. Boy, when Holyfield triggers off a counterpunch, here comes. Oh, he's gonna beat him? Okay. Ooh, starched him. A wild missed and he goes down again. It's all over. He's getting up. He's over. It's over. He cannot get up. He stayed, looked at the doctor right in the face, shook his head, and that was the end of that. Damn. And a knockout. Kawi. His fame grew. So did his fortune. He built an enormous mansion. That's where Gross House now. Of expensive new toys. And of course, the highest peak one could ever reach. Hmm. I don't remember this. That one like my Mike check and Tyson punch out. Was showing up at his fights, trying to build hype for the super fight. 
Boom, perfect timing. And there he is amidst this capacity crowd for the world heavyweight champion Mike Tyson with his wife Robin Gibbons, the actress, and that is the man as they are introduced. Just one more belt was needed to become the first ever undisputed cruiserweight champ. And here we go. Okay. Is that nigga fighting back? It don't feel like it. God damn, boy. At least cover yourself. And route to capturing the Ooh. third and final cruiserweight strap. You know what this is showing me more than anything? Like you watch these boxers, right? And you see one boxer get beat by another boxer that's a great boxer, like 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 Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, uh, Joe Lewis, and Muhammad Ali. Like you know George Foreman, Muhammad Ali. You see all these great fighters when they fight each other. You get this sense like, oh, he wasn't fucking with him, or he wasn't as good as him. But when you when you watch them fight all these other niggas, it's like, yo, that looked like the greatest shit I ever seen. Then you watch the next person, that nigga look amazing. You get you get an understanding that these people fighting each other should be always should be spectacles because in all actuality you really never know who's better until they fight each other. Cause I'm pretty sure these other boxers who was never as big as them had people telling them that they was the greatest too. That's just what I think. I could be wrong. That's what I think though. Oh, he made it a round eight. He was probably fighting and just couldn't sustain it. After unifying the cruiserweight division, Holyfield made the move on mm -hmm. the heavyweight. When the former cruiserweight king stepped up to the heavyweight ranks, he had to prove he belonged there. This evening, amidst the Who we finna fight? Serenity, Evander, real deal Holyfield. Make quick, James, James Quick Tillis. I said male. What did I get male from? Much different to you to walk into your dressing room now that you're a full heavyweight instead of a, a cruiserweight? Well, I don't feel no different. I think each and every fight is important, and so... Um, it's no different. In his first heavyweight fight, he take on the man who had given Tyson the hardest fight of his mm -hmm. career, James Tillis. That nigga looks scary as hell. He beat him. He beating his ass. Oof. Oof. Mm. Mm. Boy. Boy. Get your shit together, Tillis. Mm. Wow. That nigga gave up. It was a thorough and dominant outing that only raised more questions about Evander from haters. Some really? Spirit here on the boardwalk at Atlantic City. The questions Atlantic about his power and ability to finish mm, large okay. fights. Evander did not out till as you recall, and the question still lingers concerning uh, his strength and size in the heavyweight ranks. Holyfield says his hand speed and foot speed will uh, be the difference. The 26-year-old Evander Holyfield has uh, given up his World Cruiserweight Championship, and he has set his sights on Mike Tyson in the World Heavyweight Championship. In a Christmas outing. As by Ring Magazine, okay. He only got 19, 19 fights. And that happens from time to time. And they were saying, get off first, get the punch off. Oof. Okay. And there he did. And Pink Lot, he's hanging on. Oof. Okay. Okay. As Holyfield doubled up with Okay. Thomas is dazed. He's got a cut under his right eye. He is dazed. Oof. Oof. 
Oof. Okay. Let's go. Ooh. It was a holiday beatdown that saw Thomas quit on his stool between rounds. Bye, bye. That's it. That's he it. pummeling these niggas. And now 20 and 0 with 16 knockouts overall. Still, the press speculated Holyfield lacked the power to compete in the heavies. They trimmed it down. The better Holyfield 208 was 210 his last fight looking to outspeed out quick the 225 pound Michael Dunn, Michael let's go former WBA heavyweight champion Doug said he's going to come right out look for the knockout Lou Duva says the key word here for Evander Holyfield is respect it was against former champion Ooh. Michael Dokes that many believed Holyfield's heavyweight Ooh. dreams would come to an end Okay. Okay, Holyfield. He was simply too small. Not a real oh. heavyweight. Holyfield finna lose? He's got Holyfield in some trouble here. He landed to the face. Holyfield. It was an epic showdown. Mm. Both are hurting each other. Oof. Holyfield still stands in. Okay, Holyfield. The crowd is standing here at Caesar's Palace. Let's go. Who he viewed as all Oof. Okay, wobbly legs. One more, Holyfield. Ooh, there you go. There you go. By giving Dokes one of the most thorough beatings he'd ever received. Mm. Oof. He done. He done. He done. Yeah. A spectacular knockout. Oof. Michael Dokes, former heavyweight champion, across the ring. And Dokes coming towards us. He's down. He's out. He's out. It's over. And ended the fight. Wally, I ain't gonna say. All right, so I'm breaking this into two parts. So that was part one of Evander Holyfield, the real deal. The next video, which will be part two, will be out. It'll be out Friday. Thank y'all for watching. I appreciate it. Be stay stay tuned for part two of this video. Only reason why I'm doing it in two parts is because this. This documentary is 50 minutes long, so I don't want to, you know, make an hour long video, hour something long video. So we're going to break it into two parts. Be on the lookout for that, man. Key versus, key versus the stars. Peace, man.